Hey guys, welcome to episode 176 of the Cat Lady Podcast. My name is Anne. I did it, I said podcast. <laughs> the Cat Lady Channel. Just so have it. I've been doing this for like six years, I feel, I think. I, I've so long I can't even remember anymore. But welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea, also known as Cat Lady. That's two T's, which stands for Craft All the Things. I am primarily a fiber based channel. Anything that uh, deals with yarn and string, I like to do, but I also do lots of other things. I have a cricket that I occasionally pull out. It's awful dusty. <laughs> and lots of other just brand. I collect hobbies. I collect hobby supplies. <laughs> so you never know what's going to come out and what's going to be. I'm going to see something I want to do and then I give it a try. So that is my spiel. If you want to follow me on social media, I am the Cat Lady on Instagram. I also have a Facebook group, the Cat Lady. Uh, I have a coffee account at www.ko fi. Um, I don't know, slash the cat lady, everything's down below. Uh, if you'd like to donate to the podcast, thank you everyone who has chipped in a few dollars here and there. I love it and I'm going to use it to do a make along and I will talk about that in a moment. Um, if you want to follow my yarn dyeing business, you can sign up for my newsletter. There, It is uh, also linked down below. That is the newsletter is always the first, per, first group to know what's coming up, know what sales are going on and get access to sales or pretty much exclusive. Last uh, My last round of sale, which was a very deeply discounted sale, was only for my, my newsletter. So if you want to be the first to know, then the newsletter is the place to be. And I do not spam you with newsletters. I don't send enough newsletters. So just, just so you know. Lastly, I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. I do have a little list here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, actually this isn't a very good list anyways but oh discord if you want to chat on a regular basis just you know it's like a forum there is a link to the discord server that you can join and we just kind of chat it's an app you can use it on the computer it's very easy to use once you get in there as far as chatting I don't know how to do all this. there's so many things you can do in there and I have a moderator that kind of handles <laughs> a lot of it um, but for chatting, it's just, you, well, there's different channels. So you can talk about yarn, talk about general stuff, talk about life stuff, talk about the cat lady stuff. So it's a really cool place just to hang out. And they did a group chat actually not that long ago, which I'm hoping we should do it. We should do again. I missed it because I didn't set my alarm and I was tired and I just totally, totally forgot about it. So, but usually I would plan to be a part of the group chats as well. So that is it. I am from Michigan. I live in my house with two kids, a husband, and a cat. If you are new, thank you for coming and joining my channel. I tend to record in snippets throughout the week and then post it on Fridays. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back and listening to me say the same things over and over again. Um, it is Tuesday, September 6th, and the kids had their first day, are having their first day of school. It is only a half day, so they will be home soon. I feel like by the time I get David onto the bus, I don't have very much time before Emily's going to be home. So uh, she will probably be home soon, but I'll wrap this up before she gets here. So over the weekend was Labor Day weekend. We did not do anything. We did some chores. Um, my arms are really sore from trimming trees. Um, I did go piano shopping yesterday. <laughs> so I'm in the market of potentially getting an actual piano. So right now we have a, a digital piano and like a digital keyboard, two different things. So I'd like to get an actual acoustic upright piano. So I'm kind of delving into that territory. So I take piano lessons. My son takes piano lessons. So um, usually I talk about this stuff at the end. I'm kind of throwing it out <laughs> early, but so let's get into the crafty stuff. I finished my sock arm sweater. Uh, it is done. And as much as it gave me a hard time, I am very happy with it. It is very form-fitting, which it's fine. I like form-fitting clothes anyways. It is, yeah, I, des I made it a small so that it would kind of be form-fitting. The sleeves I wish were just a touch looser, but they're, they're, they're like a perfect fit. So this is Sock Arms by Telly Bean Knits. Uh, Knit Picks Yarn Swish Worsted in loam heather which is the brown and then rustic cabin was the sleeves felici that picks felici and speaking of felici so the woman who i was chatting back and forth with regarding my yarn issue if you go back to my last video you'll see what i'm talking about i had an issue with the felici on the sleeves she said she'd send me a new skein 
Well, she came back and said she'd send me two skeins just in case I needed to read, <laughs> needed them to match. Like, because I had mentioned I wasn't sure if I'd have enough yarn. That was kind of an overreaction on my part because I had a feel I knew I'd have enough yarn. I was pretty confident I have enough yarn, but just in case. She said, since it's not the same dye lot, they only do one dye lot a lot per year, but I bought this in 2020. So she said, I will send you two. So I have two skeins of the Rustic Cabin coming. So that's exciting. I don't know, I'm kind of excited about that. So I will find other projects to do, obviously. I'm going to make a hat, which will should only take one. And I don't know, maybe matching knits. That'd be cute. So I like the worsted fleecy because I like stripey projects and you don't really get a lot of worsted uh, stripes, stripey yarn, so. Oh, we could make worsted socks. Oh, this could be nice. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll make hat and socks. I don't know. So lots of options. So since I finished that sweater, I'm like in like, I'm suffering from cast on-itis as in I want to cast on all the things. So I feel like cast on-itis can be two things. Either you don't want to cast on anything or you want to cast on everything. And I am at the point where I want to cast on everything. But I mentioned this before. This was kind of on my to-do. I wanted to cast on uh, a sweater with my hand-dyed yarn. So this is all I have left from after selling everything. And this is Tainted Love. I am being such a good knitter, <laughs> I guess you could say. I am alternating skeins, which actually, I don't know. I feel like I probably could have got away with not alternating skeins. I do have a third one that needs to be... Uh, worked in at some point so i'll figure that out and i'm hoping three skeins is enough i'm making this again this is going to be form fitting i'm cast on it's the real easy raglan by maker maker i don't she doesn't have her name on there emily her name's emily oh emily bolduan everything's on Ra everything i will link down below i do have rap oh i also have ravelry that all my projects are in there so but this is I'm alternating skeins. It's a very, very, very simple raglan pattern. It's free, but there were short, short rows in there. And this is the first time I've done short rows in a sweater. So it just brings up the back a little bit. So here's the neck. So it's about like this. So the short rows come around in the back here and just brings it up a little bit. So I like that because I don't like it like choking me. I don't really care that much, but I prefer if I have a choice, I'm going to choose to not have it do that. So let's see if I can, it's, it's very, it's a very little, little difference, honestly, but it'll make a difference. Um, but I'm making the extra small because it is a very roomy pattern. So and I did do a gauge swatch, but I feel like my gauge is still different now than it was. And my gauge is still like tighter than it should be. Or yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm hoping I don't screwed up but it's supposed to be kind of a loosey like two to four inches of positive ease so i'm pretty much doing no no ease because i want it to be i, I want to have enough yarn and i want it to be a form-fitting short sleeve so it's going to be just a cap sleeve kind of just real short and then i'm going to start ribbing like right under the bust and rib down to hopefully enough just to reach like high-waisted jeans so kind of a cropped semi-cropped or a very just waist level or like hip hip level shirt so nothing long or anything and that's my plan but it's turning out very pretty I do like the color the way it's working up I love I love I love working with hand dyed yarn I really do uh, I do notice I did I should have cut the yarn and rejoined at the spot I have like kind of a puffy stitch over here but no oh, it's in the back uh, but I can see like the pops of orange in this colorway and then I got like the subtly subtle speckles I just I really like how it's turning out so, and the alternating skein seems to be working. I, I found a very easy method to alternate skeins. So it's super easy, super easy. You just really just move the yarn in front, move the yarn in back, move the other yarn in front, move the yarn in back. It's, it's like, it's super easy. There's no weird twisting. There's no weird seam. I mean, you can see it because it's a little tighter there, but I have, a, I think that'll block out pretty, but I mean, again, it's not noticeable and it'll block out. So. So that's it. Uh, so I'm using these two skeins and eventually I'll figure out how to get the third one in there when needed. And that is not living in any bag. <laughs> so lastly, not really lastly, but lastly for my current makes, I got my skein of Karen Simply Soft in hot pink, neon pink, not hot pink, neon pink, that I needed. So I called the store that's about 20 minutes away from me. So I have a Joann's that's like five minutes away. 
but I called the store that was 20 minutes away that said they had one on their website and they had one and she held it for me so me and Emily drove up there uh, last week and picked it up so I haven't started anything yet or anything but I have it so that's exciting so I can work on my very Vero v-neck and finish that for next summer <laughs> um, okay so that's it for my current makes I haven't worked on anything else however I like I said I have cast on itis so I am looking to what did I do with it oh it fell so I'm looking to start some uh, crocheted knitted knockers so knitted knockers is the nonprofit that makes prosthetic breast forms out of yarn for breast cancer survivors so there's a couple of them I used to be a volunteer for awesome breast forms which had their own kind of pattern and system but they I don't know they were kind of I don't know the word they were really strict which was fine but I don't know I, I it was too it was kind of stressful and you sent the things directly to the customer and it was just kind of like awkward not not bad awkward but it was just it was like there was more it was like being a test knitter it was like you're under pressure so now I'm just gonna so the reluctant knitter Adrian of the reluctant sisters podcast is channel is making is doing a make along so it's the rk for reluctant knitter save the tatas mal make along so anything that you make for breast cancer awareness qualifies so you can make chemo caps you can make anything that's pink anything that you relate to breast cancer awareness i'd say like prayer shawls um and knockers she's making the knockers and she said you get double points into the prize to win a prize if you make knockers so i have this and i look through there's a certain um, list of yarn so if you're making it for a friend or somebody you know you can use whatever yarn you want if you're making it for the knitted knockers organization um you, there's a there's a list of approved yarns so this i have i got this from somebody in my neighborhood like they just had a bag of yarn that they were getting rid of uh, it's Patton's Grace Mercerized Cotton. I have six of these. One, two, three. Yeah, six of these. I got these natural champagne color, and then I got a pink and purple. So I thought I would go ahead and see if I can make a crocheted knocker out of this. And because I'm, I'm trying to use up stash, even though I keep buying yarn. But uh, So I'm going to cast on one of these today. Next, I think I mentioned it before, but I'm not sure, but I want to cast on a scrappy blanket. Maybe I didn't. I need a blanket for downstairs. I need a nice just couch blanket throw that can live downstairs because I'm always cold and I want to cuddle up under a blanket and it does get cat hair everywhere so it can't come in our bedroom. So, and it needs to be washable. So it's, I'm thinking I have like this whole giant bin of acrylic yarn that I would love to just get rid of. I don't really, I mean, I use scraps here and there, but I'd just love to be done with it. Like, I'd like to be able to just have all my yarn on my shelf, get rid of these bins. So I have two bins. I have a bin of cotton that I'm trying to work my way through, and I have the bin of acrylic scraps. So I'm thinking a scrappy chevron blanket is gonna be fun. So it's gonna be like a double crochet chevron. So I might cast that on today, because I'm gonna have to chain like a million and do a row or two of that. And then I can just pull some yarn out of there do a few rows, pull another one, do a row or two, pull another one, and just start using up those scraps. And that is going to be my plan. So I'm going to pull out that bin today and look through that and start planning my attack. So I will have the blanket. I will have I will have too many projects back on my back on the works again. But I don't care. I just want to do everything. So I'm hyper focused on this sweater. So that is what's going to get the most attention. I will make sure to put a marker where I left off. So. I have this marker here, but I was counting rows, but I'm getting close to being done with the raglan increases and I'm hoping that I'm, I might have to add more because like I said, I cast on the extra small and it might be, that might have been a mistake. So I'm hoping I can fudge it and just keep on going a little bit. <laughs> so that's it for today. I will be back later this week uh, with updates on what I've been working on and uh, we'll let you know how the kids first week of school is going. I will see you soon. Hey guys, it is Thursday, September 8th, I think. I don't know. Yes, it's September 8th. It, I am back with some updates. Um, kids had their first day of school, first half day, then whole day yesterday, and so far so good. Everybody likes their classes and likes their teachers, so yay. 
But we're also back to the super duper chaotic scheduling that comes with having a child in robotics and cross country and then David's piano. And I know anyone who has kids is aware of the chaos, but boy, of course, cross country, I originally was supposed to be, a, we thought was supposed to be right after school, but now it's not always right after school. It is sometimes, but most days it's like at six. Well, that's when robotics is as well. So, like, but we'll, we made it work last year. We'll make it work this year. So, but that was a little bit like uh, kind of a, we were kind of expecting something and it didn't work out. So, or it didn't happen. And I've tried to rearrange David's piano because I thought, again, I was picking her up after school and that didn't work. So it's, anyways, that was my rant. I have some uh, sweater progress for you. So last you saw, I was working on the easy, real, oh, dropping yard, real easy raglan by Maker Maker uh, something. I don't know her name. I already said her name earlier. So, and I'm using hand dyed yarn that's falling all over the floor. Oh my God, it's totally under my chair. So, anyways, last you saw, I was he here. This is really annoying. I was where this little kitty cat marker is. Where is he? Over here. Right there. So I got about a couple inches done, but I separated for the sleeves. So you can, so yeah, I got like a couple of rows under the sleeves. I tried it on. So if you have not ever heard of these or seen these, this is, and there's a m bunch of different makers that make these, but this is the Knitting Barber. I think these were kind of the original. They're really, they're just plastic or uh, like rubber tubes but they've come in handy so you take this rubber tube thing and you can stick it over the end of the needle and then you can slide your stitches onto it and for well for what i did for this is i didn't even like you're supposed to use it like to like hold your stitches or you know whatever but for this i stuck one on each end of each needle and then spread out the stitches just enough so i could get the thing on over my head um, but yeah this is a perfect fit i'm absolutely ecstatic because the pattern actually got a little weird it's a free pattern so i'm not giving anything away but after the, I've, I've made sweaters before. So after the raglan increases is typically when you separate for the sleeves, right? Well, she had you make another row that increased the body and then continue knitting even farther down until a certain, <coughs> certain measurement. Well, I'm looking at my sweater and I had sort of tried it on before I separated for the sleeves and it seemed like it was decent. I held it up against another sweater I'd made getting like similar measurements as far as the width and the the length of the raglan i'm like i don't like the idea of adding more rows without increases and it just seemed off i just didn't i didn't like it so i'm like you know what? i'm just gonna trust my instinct which doesn't always work for me and i'm gonna just separate for the sleeves as i would a normal sweater and yeah it, it fits perfect it's it's gorgeous i love it so it's a very it's a snug fit it's a form fit um, which is what I'm going for. And yeah, so now I need to, I said, uh, my friend suggested I, so I'm trying to make sure I disperse the yarn well enough and don't run out. So someone suggested I uh, do the sleeves first. So I think I'm going to do that. So I think I'm going to pull from the, I don't want to disconnect my yarn. So I think I'm going to pull from one of the existing skeins opposite end and then um, alternate it with my third skein. So I'll get the third skein, skein going in there for one sleeve. And then I'll take the other skein with the third skein, alternate that sleeve. I honestly think they're close enough together that it's not gonna be noticeable. Looking at them, they look like they're not gonna be like starkly different. They're all from the same pan. They were all dyed together, so they should be close enough. So I don't think it's gonna be noticeable. And I'm gonna make short sleeves, so the sleeves will be, you know, it'll be short. Then as far as alternating towards the end, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna work. I'm gonna have to probably, I don't know. I'm gonna eventually, I, I don't know. I can't even picture how that's gonna go. Uh, I'll have to like start, like save some, start alternating the third one in until I run out of the one of the skeins and then, yeah, I don't know, I'll figure it out. But I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll make it out of two, maybe it'll work out of two skeins. I doubt it. Well, if I do, maybe the body will work out with the rest of the two skeins. I don't know, probably not. But uh, yeah, okay, I'm done rambling again. Get off of these tangents. But yeah, I made a, I made a little bit of progress. So again, real easy raglan. 
and that is Tainted Love is the colorway of Cat Lady Yarns. So, what is up next? I told you I wanted to cast on everything, and I told you about this project, so we started this. This is the crocheted knitted knocker, so not knitted, but the crochet knocker for the Knitted Knockers Foundation charity group. So I have a tiny boob <laughs> piece. So I just started. Um, it's uh, it's thin. It's kind of thin yarn, so and it's a you know dense pattern. So I feel like it's taking a long time, but I, did, I haven't worked on it that long. But I took it to piano with me yesterday, and this is for the. Reluctant Knitters, Save the Tatas Make Long, and the hashtag will be down below, but it is RK Save the Tatas MAL 2022. So it's kind of a long one. But she wanted to make sure she had her name sort of in there, what the thing is, and then the year, because she does it again. So this runs through September, uh, so that anything you make that's breast cancer related can then be donated. My hair is really weird today. It can be donated in October. So. That's that, and that's living in a, one of my one of the first bags I ever made, actually, a little flower pattern. And that's it. <clears throat> and next, you're not gonna expect this one. This one's gonna just come out of left field. I busted out the Turkish spindle. <laughs> I've really been wanting to spin. There's no, there's, I'm, I'm no, no, uh, no hiding that. I really have been wanting to spin. I really do want to put something on the wheel downstairs, but. I just, I'm just sitting in here with my, my husband, and we're just chatting. I just look over, and I'm like, I'm going to start spinning. <laughs> He's like, I think you should. I said, okay. So this is, and th this is the perfect spin project for this spindle. And I'm going to Rhinebeck again. Now, okay, will I finish these before Rhinebeck? Probably not. But if I at least get like halfway through this bag, I feel like I'm justified to buy another bag. I know I still haven't done anything with the minis from the first I don't know, do I, is this my third bag or my second bag? How many bags of these do I have? Um, I have two bags of these already. Fun. So this is my third bag. I need a project. I need like an epic shawl or something. <laughs> because there are all these minis. And I ply on the fly, which means you spin a single, which I started this. So this mini is going to be a little jacked up because I started it. I'm like, I forgot how to do this. But I think I've got a handle on it now. But you start spinning your singles and then you get a little bit of a single worked up and then you re kind of wind it back on your hand and then you chain ply it and so when you're done when you're done done so when I'm done with this it's already it's it's done you just pull it off and it's a already it's already yarned so if you look you probably don't know how well you can see on the camera but it's already yarned on there because it's already been plied up back on itself so I like that and I like these minis because they're all you know they're tiny so they because I mean a spindle can only hold so much you can't get four ounces on a spindle you can get like two I think and it starts to get heavy and clunky and hard to handle so this is like such a perfect little you can travel with it and it's just a perfect thing to put on the spindle so I have a whole bag so that's the number one so I just started one so and this is into the world <clears throat> odds and ends they always they have in the past I've always had these at Rhinebeck and I always got in a bag so this was from 2019, so it's about time. And I still have it. I still want to cast on a scrappy blanket, but maybe I'll wait a little bit now that I got like so many things going on. So that's it. Uh, I am going to drive an hour and a half to go look at a piano today. <sighs> There's a reason pianos are expensive. Okay, pianos are expensive. Used pianos are expensive still. Uh, you can find free pianos, and I don't know if I mentioned this, I might have talked about this already, but. You don't know what you're getting. You have no idea what you're getting unless you hire a technician to come and look at it. And even then, they can look at it and say it seems okay, but then you bring it home and it's not okay, you know, two months later. So I want to get it from a reputable source. So I went to another piano store yesterday and chatted with a guy and he was, he wanted to sell me a piano and I found a piano I really liked. It's a Yamaha U1 and it's, so it's a really nice, it's like, it's a mid-level piano. It's not, it's like a step above entry level pianos. It's a tall, upright, and apparently I've learned things about pianos that I never knew, but the taller the better. So, you know, most pianos that, you, that uh, are just entry level pianos are like 42 inches, 43 inches. Once you get above like 45 inches, you get the more grander sounding 
more uh, mid-level piano. So this one is a 45 inch, I believe is the, is it 40, no, is it 48? No, it might be 48, I think it's a 48 inch, so, which is the height. So the, all the pianos are about the same width. This one's taller, which gives it more, the soundboard on the back it is then larger to make a larger, grander sound. You get more bass tones and just, I don't know. But all, every single piano sounds different. The older models, depending on who's tuned it, how it's been tuned, they're, they're all different. So I tried the one at the store and I really liked it, but it was really expensive. It was a little out of my budget that I wanted. Um, so I found another one, it's the same piano by a, he's a, he's a, he's a tuner service guy for pianos. My friend had recommended him and, and he happened to have the same model, the Yamaha U1, but he lives up near my friend who's in Midland. So I am driving to Midland to go see this piano, but it's, you know, over a thousand dollars less in price. So it would be worthwhile, but I got to like the piano, you know, so I need to, need to see it, touch it, see, see how it is. And he has another model I can look at too. So, uh, I'm going to do that shortly and I'll let you know how that goes. So I will be back tomorrow with my final update and wrap it up see what else I get done. It's a relatively lazy day today. There's no activities besides Emily's got cross country. I got to pick her up. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to spend the day driving back and forth and then I will maybe spend the evening in my craft room doing some uh, spinning or knitting or crocheting or whatever. So I will catch up with you later. Hey guys, it's Friday. We're going to wrap it up this week. Uh, I have not done a lot. I've been, it's just been super hectic with the kids' schedules and outings and stuff already. So I've not worked on a ton since I showed you stuff last time. Uh, but there were a few things I forgot to show earlier this week. So I got my Felici replacement. So I got two new skeins of the Rustic Cabin. So that's nice. Nothing, ex nothing too exciting, but free yarn is always fun. So that's that. And then I forgot to show off. I worked on this last weekend. I pulled off, pulled out another kind of hibernating project, my little weaving squares. So I got one, well, I haven't trimmed the end. So I got two weaving squares done. So my ultimate goal is to make some placemats. So they'll be alternating the colored squares with pure black. And I think I was going to do four, one, two, three, four wide and then three long. I don't know. I had it kind of calculated out, but I kind of forgot. So this is using hand spun by Fiber Dog Fibers. And this is the Rainbow Stars mini set. So I have two of those mini sets that I've been working through. And then I have her, she also hand dyed and over, over dyed some black, like pure black yarn. So, but in a very similar, it's not the same, but it's also the hand spun. So it's real rustic and I don't know, it's kind of nice. It's like, I feel like it's perfect for this project and for placemat. So it's not going to be like machine washable, which I guess could be a problem, but well, I can probably wash it on gentle. I don't think it's super wash. I don't know. Probably not. No, it's, there's no way because it's hand spun and she buys like fleeces and stuff. Anyways, she like hand processes the whole thing. So it's, there's no way. So on to, uh, speaking of hand spun though, I've been working on my spindle. I still haven't finished this mini. I was hoping to finish this before I recorded, but I didn't. I still have like half of it left probably, but I got more and I'm getting more confident in the chain, chain uh, ply on the fly. So, but it's getting pretty, this is a really pretty combo. It's got some, it goes gray and then pink and then peach. And then it'll go back into pink and gray and peach. <laughs> so, and this is uh, the odds and ends sets from Into the World fiber and that's it that's it so I haven't touched anything else I haven't touched my sweater I haven't touched anything else uh, I probably I might have done a row or two on the crocheted knitted knocker but not enough to really show any, any progress so this weekend is another kind of busy well Saturday's busy Saturday we have robotics so <clears throat> Emily has robotics but it's the kickoff so it's kind of a big deal so we're all gonna be there and do our thing and learn what the season's going to be all about so that'll be fun but it's it's a long day um, or it's a full day so, uh sunday we'll probably just chill and 
uh, Splatoon 3 has come out, so Emily is very excited. We did a preview week of the game, well, two weeks ago or something, and everybody was fun, uh, had fun playing that, even though the server kept dropping us. So hopefully they have that figured out and it'll be better. <laughs> but the full game comes out now, so Emily, I don't know if she's just going to play the Turf War style stuff or if she's going to play the actual game, and I don't have it yet for my system, but I might wait a little bit. I really like to do the big festival things that they do, but as far as playing like daily and stuff, I haven't been gaming as much, so because I have so many crafts. <laughs> so. Uh, so I won't ramble too much. This is a pretty short clip, but I hope everyone has a good weekend, and I will be back to it recording next week. And yeah, it's starting to... Uh, it's, you wake up and it feels like fall, but now it's like 80, 90 degrees out, so it doesn't feel like fall anymore. I have my sweater on. I had a hat on this morning, but then I, like, I went out again and I was burning up, so the weather's being weird. I am kind of looking forward to fall now. I was kind of in like the gung-ho, don't let go of summer mode, and then all of a sudden it just switched, so I am back. I am here in fall mode, so I'm looking forward to wearing my hats because it covers up my messy hair when I don't, <laughs> don't do it, uh, and... Yeah, and but we're going to the bus stop in the morning. It's cold, so I did wear my hat. Um, <clears throat> so that's it. I'm rambling, and I again appreciate everyone for uh, watching, and I hope you get to craft all the things.